Hey everyone, a little while ago I did a collaboration video with David from uh, David Drives Electric and Eric, uh, the bolt guy from News Coulomb, as well as an i3 owner. We did kind of a, uh, an informal efficiency comparison between uh, my Model 3, David's older rear drive Model S, uh, Eric's Bolt, and a, well, what turned out to be a BMW i3s. It was a fun collaboration to do. I didn't shoot any video myself. Um, the video is actually up on David's channel. I'll put a, a link in the video description if you want to check that out. Anyway, today I am at the Santa Clarita Supercharger because I am meeting with everyone's favorite Norwegian Tesla human hybrid, Tesla Bjorn, to do an efficiency comparison between my Model 3, my Performance Model 3 without the, um, the Performance Upgrades package, um, an Ionic, and uh, Eric from News Coulomb was here again with his Bolt, as well as a bunch of other uh, different configurations of Model 3, which I'll go over later. Um, Bjorn's uh, around here somewhere. So yeah, not everyone has arrived yet, but once everyone does, well, we'll get the show on the road. The agreed upon route was chosen to take the range limitations of the Hyundai Ionic into consideration and started down here in Santa Clarita at the Santa Clarita Tesla Supercharger. From there, we would drive up I-5 North all the way to the Lebec Service Road right here, where we turn around and then head right back down I-5 South to return to the Santa Clarita Supercharger. According to Google Maps, the total trip distance is 76.7 miles, and for those wondering about elevation change, the net elevation change of this trip obviously is basically zero because we're starting and ending at the same place. However, just as a point of reference, the Tesla Supercharger at Santa Clarita is at an elevation of about 1,000 feet, and the peak elevation for this trip is about 4,000 feet. So the trip is a lot of uphill, but an equal amount of downhill on the way back. This might introduce a little bit of weirdness just because of the difference in regenerative braking between the cars being compared. And we're off like a herd of turtles. Okay. So now that I'm off Bjorn's group chat, since my phone lost cell reception, uh, I'm currently driving on I-5 uh, following the Hyundai Ionic. Uh, the two of us got cut off from the rest of the group when we started out because a car pulled out in front of us and it caused us to miss a couple lights. So um, I'm not sure how far ahead of us the rest of the group is, uh, but at the, at the very least I can hang back here and, uh, and just make sure that there's someone near the Ionic, <laughs> since it's uh, the only car that might have difficulty making the trip. The rules for the trip were to hold 75 miles an hour uh, using cruise control, uh, in the case of the Tesla's using TAC. Autopilot could use, not use, it's up to you. Climate control had to be set at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and uh, TAC follow distance set no closer than five, if I, as I recall. And we're supposed to do our best to try to keep uh, about a constant 75. So, so the whole idea here is we're not trying to gain efficiency. So we're not drafting each other. No one's doing any like coasting or any of that stuff. Um, we're just keeping up with traffic and uh, seeing how things turn out. So there we go, that's it. I made it back to the starting point. And uh, let's see, traveled 76.5 miles. Uh, this says I use 19 kilowatt hours uh, and average 244 watt hours per mile. Let's check in with everyone else. The Model 3 long range rear drive with 18 inch aero wheels came in as the most efficient during the test with an average efficiency of 
232 watt hours per mile. The Hyundai Ioniq came in second with an average efficiency of 238 watt hours per mile. The Model 3 long range all wheel drive performance with 18 inch aero wheels, that's my car, came in third at 244 watt hours per mile. The Model 3 long range rear drive with 19 inch sport wheels came in fourth at 246 watt hours per mile. The Model 3 long range all wheel drive with 18 inch aero wheels came in fifth at 255 watt hours per mile. The Model 3 long range all wheel drive performance with the performance upgrades package and 20 inch wheels with sport tires came in at 278 watt hours per mile. Eric and his Chevy Bolt came in seventh at 287 watt hours per mile. And bringing up the rear is the Model S P85 Plus with 21 inch wheels at 321 watt hours per mile. Again, there's nothing particularly shocking here, but it is a little strange uh, that my performance car on 18 inch aero wheels did so much better than the dual motor car on aero wheels. Hypothetically, they should have been about the same. Before anyone launches into speculation about how supposedly Tesla is binning the performance motors and that as a result, they may just be more efficient motors and that's why my car was more efficient, I think the more likely explanation here is simply due to differences in traffic pattern configuration. You see, our test group wasn't actually able to stay together and the moment that the group cohesion fell apart was right here before we even left the mall parking lot. This car, rather than just turning right, sat at this light far longer than it needed to, which broke the whole group up by several minutes. So as a result, you had me and the Hyundai Ionic Odor forming our own little group and sticking together, matching speed, um, and, and basically navigating through traffic the same way throughout the test, which means that the numbers for our two cars are probably the most comparable. The Model S P85 Plus, Chevy Bolt, and long-range dual-motor Model 3 with 18-inch aero wheels, however, pulled a James May, took the wrong exit, and went on an adventure. Some confusion caused them to deviate from the agreed-upon route, which just increased the margin of error for the test. You can see Eric's experience as part of the James May group in his video, link in the video description below. As the result of their detour, the Ionic and I actually caught up with them. Yep, I see the red Model S. The discrepancy between the dual motor car and my car is something that's still bothering me a bit, so I think I may revisit this test on my own at some point, just to see what sort of variation you actually see between runs. Because remember, we only had one data point per car, so maybe we'd have a better understanding of this information if, you know, for example, I did the course three or four times and figured out how much variation there actually was between runs as a result of di slightly different traffic configurations. Who knows, the results may have been slightly different if we were actually able to keep everyone together. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I want to thank Bjorn for setting this whole thing up and contacting everyone and arranging it. Uh, I want to thank everyone who sacrificed their Saturday afternoon to drive cars in circles with us. And I want to thank Eric from News Coulomb for hanging around afterwards yet again for a few hours to chat about EV video projects and collaboration stuff. So expect to see more collaboration between myself and Eric at some point in the future. As always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below. Don't forget to rate and subscribe, and I'll see you later.